inside. Amen. Would you stand with us, please, this morning? Amen. It's so good to have Riker with us today. Riker Simpson, it's good to have him this morning. Amen. I met uh, Riker yesterday with Maya, and uh, just fall in love with him. He's a great boy. Amen. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's remember, uh, I guess Sister Cindy is still sick. Let's pray for that family, and uh, Haley is homesick, Sister Haley, so let's pray for that, amen, and uh, let's remember the Lumpkins, they messaged last night asking for prayer, a lot going on there, and um, <clears throat> let's just remember them, amen. Anybody else got a request that you want to, Sister Ashley? Uh, Andrew and Elizabeth, they do have a double ear section, they ask for prayer. Oh, Lord, let's pray for that, amen. Sister Camila? remember that. That's very, very sad. He's been battling this for some time now. Let's pray for that. Anybody else got a request? Amen. And how old is he, Sister Camille? 33 years old. That's terrible. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for that. Sister Wanda, would you take us to the Lord in prayer this morning? <laughs>
Chelsea, give us a song this morning. See, oh, wow. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond. There's a savior that's just in the glorious day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
certainly love Brother Ken this morning. Amen. Such a good young man. Lord, we thank you for this time of giving. And Lord, we pray for uh, all those that have to give, Lord, and those that can't, don't, or won't. Lord, you see, you understand. But Heavenly Father, we ask that you pour out a blessing. There won't be room to receive it this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Chase. If you give unto the Lord, He will give you more to give, more to give, more to give. Sister Patty has been sick this week, but thank God she's here this morning. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a praise. I praise the Lord, Rob, that my wife got a brand new job, and it's the same time I work, and so she gets to be off every weekend and every evening, and I get to spend time with her. Amen. Amen. I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> Time will tell. Amen. Praise the Lord. The two Marthas coming down the aisle together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody else got a praise this morning. Somebody else got a praise. So quiet. I just like to thank the Lord for this beautiful weather. Brother Eric, how's your mother doing? To my knowledge, she's still doing okay. I didn't get to see her this month. Things didn't work out quite, quite right, but I'm back on the as soon as I can. All right. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Anybody else got a praise this morning? I praise the Lord that I feel better. Amen. Not Amen. over it, but I'm better. Praise the Lord. He has a bout with that stomach flu. It's kind of going around. I know. I understand that. Amen. Anybody else this morning? All right, Sister Martha, you ready? Sister Martha, are you all ready? Huh? All right, she's still looking. It takes a while to pick out that song. No, that's all right. Somebody else praise the Lord then. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Praise the Lord for all his blessings. He's saving my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's been an interesting few weeks for me. Amen. Things that you think you never have to go through, you go through. And things that um, you look back and you say, ah, you know, those aha moments. It's amazing, though, what God can bring us through. Amen. If we just sit back and let the Lord drive the car. Amen. And uh, I just thank God that he's always in control. Even, Sister Patty, when we don't think he knows what's going on, Lord, what the world, amen, he knows exactly what he's doing. And I thank God for that. I thank the Lord, brother, and sister Case have been coming, Andrew and Elizabeth, right? Amen. That blesses my heart. And let's pray for that little fella. What's his name again? Uh, Emmerich. Huh? Emmerich. Yes, that is right. Amen. I remember Belinda talking about him yesterday, how cute he is. And let's just remember that little fellow. Amen. Don't take those burdens upon yourself. Amen. And pray for them as people need prayer. Amen. Sister Martha. I went to church again today.
class files with me because they know what I'm going to say. There's 10 to 15 kids out in fellowship hall, and then there's a half dozen in here. Amen. That's where they are. I am. I am. Amen. Sister Wanda, come bless us this morning. Amen. I thank God for uh, the youth group that is growing. Amen. Don't forget, <clears throat> Vacation Bible School is coming up. Amen. We'll need volunteers. We'll need uh, people that will help. Amen. And the kids to sign up. I'm excited about that. I don't remember the dates, but it's up there somewhere. Amen. And Brother Elijah will be speaking tonight. Okay. Amen. Brother Elijah will be speaking. Amen. Sister Chelsea's going to anoint you. Let's all pray for Sister Martha I this morning. This morning God okay. Well, let's pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, yes, we pray for Lord, Sister God, Martha God, this morning. Jesus. Lord, you see the pain that she is in, God. And we ask that you touch her. Lord, just as the sister that nailed at your feet, God, and uh, Lord, kneeled at your feet, Lord, and asked for healing, God. And as others have come to you, Lord, and you have imparted unto them your healing virtue. I pray this morning that you touch our sister. And God, let it be done this morning that yeah, she will feel Lord, the difference yes, today. And God, we thank you for Sister Martha, her willingness, her humbleness, Lord. We thank you, God, for her, uh, her spirit. And Lord, we ask that you would touch her in the name of Jesus this morning. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love you, Sister Martha. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Sister Martha, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Wong, be blessed.
Amen. Sunday school classes can be dismissed. Amen. Sister Chelsea was back there working on her lesson before church, so I know it's going to be a good one today. Amen. Thank God. Brother Ethan, Brother Jaden, you guys can go on back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 These teenagers are handfuls, in case nobody knows. Amen. Sister Ivy and I spent yesterday the two of them. I'm not young enough for that stuff anymore. Yeah. Amen. And I don't envy those that have to. Sister Chrissy, you got four little ones. Not even teenagers yet. You're going to need a lot of support from these people around here. Amen. Amen. We're here to help you. Amen. We're here to help. But uh, Brother David, it's a lot of work. Amen. It's a lot of work. Amen. And I thank God that we have... Uh, kids in this church, we have preteens and teens, and uh, I'm glad they are in the house of God and not anywhere else this morning. Amen. As I look out today, I see we have quite a few missing, so let's be in prayer for those that are here today. Let's turn our Bibles, if you would, to the book of Matthew chapter 5, amen, again, and today we'll be talking about the sixth verse, amen, I uh, was studying this this week and truly enjoyed my study time. Amen. I'm just getting to where I just love to study more than I do anything else. If that's all I had to do, I'd be a happy man. Amen. But a lot goes on. Thank God. Thank God that he is always strong. And I've noticed even recently, I just, uh, I just turn and just fall, almost collapse into the presence of God. And just spiritually speaking, Sister Carissa, I can just relax in his presence and if it wasn't for that i think sometimes we people wouldn't know what to do amen brother jason when we can just turn around and fall into the the presence of god i don't know what people do that don't have that amen but i thank god that i do uh in matthew chapter 5 verse 6 says blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled uh, this scripture is the answer to all the problems of the world today. It really is. If we would all hunger and thirst after righteousness, Christ like righteousness. If we hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God and not uh, the righteousness of the world, Brother Tony, Amen. not the recognition of the world, yeah. not the uh, uh, not just the recognition, but also the the uh, acceptance of the world or the, the positive recognition of the world. But if we would search more for the righteousness of God, yeah. we would be a happier people. Amen. The world would be a better place to live. Yeah. But what we have in the society today, it has been an ongoing problem since the fall of Adam and Eve, is that people want to appease the flesh. We want to make the flesh happy. Amen. And Sister Patty, if we can't do it through uh, Christ, if we think that, that Christ can't make us uh, happy and being in the church can't make us happy, we will look to other things. Amen. But when people truly sell out, when they truly give everything to God, they will see that Christ can make them not only a better person, but a much happier person. Amen. Amen. We worry about the wars and what's going to happen tomorrow, but if we are striving for more righteousness, if we are praying, if we are hungry and thirsty for more of His righteousness, we notice that we would not worry about tomorrow. Amen. Because when we truly put faith in Christ, amen, we are ready for whatever comes tomorrow. Whatever happens to Israel, amen, we know that God has control of his church. Amen. Amen. Sister Martha, because we hunger and we thirst for his righteousness, that means that we relinquish all control. Amen. We relinquish all of our desires to be reflective of what God wants in our life, not what man would want. Amen. Seek for more of God and his righteousness and you will be fulfilled. In the terms that the word righteousness is used here, I want you to notice that it is describing the justification and sanctification processes. 
in our seeking to be more like Christ, we are taking action to be declared free from sin, justified, and seeking to be more like Christ, sanctification. <clears throat> Amen. You cannot justify your sins. Amen. You can only say I'm justified because of what Christ did at the cross. Amen. Because of his blood. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 says, But as he which hath called you to is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Think about that for just a moment. We are striving to be more like Christ. In the one scripture, Matthew 5 and 6, it says that, we, that blessed is he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness because he will be filled. It kind of sums up all the other Beatitudes because it tells us to be poor in spirit, to be mournful, and to be meek because Christ is all of those things. But being holy, as we see here in 1 Peter 1 and 15 and 16, is not talking about an outward, outside holiness. Amen. Holiness is not judged by our clothing or our hair length. Come on. Amen. I wish people in the church would get that today. I find that people are really under bondage yes. in churches. Because they are trying to live up to a standard that's not even biblical or scriptural. Yeah. Amen. amen. Can somebody else say amen? Amen. It's not about what a man describes as holy. It's what God tells you holiness is. Amen. Yeah. To be more holy is to be more scriptural. Yeah. To be more holy is to be more like Christ. Amen. Yeah. amen. Christ told us to dress modestly. Well, modesty is a up for interpretation. But it's not the church's, it's not pastor's responsibility to tell you what modesty is or isn't. Amen. It's right. the Holy Ghost's responsibility to teach you holiness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If I lack wisdom in any area, <clears throat> if I lack knowledge or understanding in any area, Sister Ashley, I simply ask God for more wisdom. Amen. Yeah. I ask God for more understanding. I ask Him for more knowledge. And I guarantee you, I promise you, because I've experienced it myself, yeah. Brother Noel, God will give those to you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Any comments on that today? I have once read the scripture in Revelation where Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold uh, uh, than lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of spew my mouth. Amen. I asked the Lord, I said, why is that the case? Isn't lukewarm better than cold? But God told me the hot on fire person is the person seeking more of God all the time. Amen. Can't get enough of God. Wants to be on fire, on revival. The cold person knows they're cold and they want God. Amen. They want to seek after God. The lukewarm person thinks he's okay. He don't yeah. need it. Yeah. So God said, I ain't got no use for them. Amen. I was talking with Aunt Gail this week. We went over to visit her for a little while. Uh, I said, I don't ever want to know everything. Amen. You know, a person that thinks they know everything, and Brother Bays and I have talked about this because he has relatives that feel like they know everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, people that think they know everything, they truly don't know anything. Yeah. And they, they have such a an inflated self-ego and such an inflated self-image that Sister Krista, they think they know everything and they're incapable of failure. Yeah. Well, if, if, if a person is incapable of failure, amen, there is no righteousness there because the Bible says a righteous man falls but he gets back up. Amen. Amen. I want to know that, that I can fail Christ that I can, I can do things or think I have an attitude that is not pleasing to God, but that he will still forgive me. Amen. If I seek and I'm hungry and thirsty for more righteousness, I'll be fulfilled. When I desire to have more of this world, I'll never get filled. Because there's always more to sin. One sin will lead to another, that will lead to another, that will lead to another. And you'll never have enough 
fulfilling of the world because sin is never filling. Amen. 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 No matter what we try to, uh, no matter what we try to put in there, it's like a buffet. <laughs> Amen. I loved buffets at one time. Now I can't eat as much as I used to. Amen. So it's not even worth going. Because the world is just like that. Amen. The more of God that you have, the more hungry and thirsty after his righteousness that you are, the less of the room, less room for the world that you have. You don't have as much room for the world. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these things will be added up to you. Yes. Amen. It's amazing because we were we were with um, <clears throat> Sister Maya wanted to go uh, ice skating yesterday. Well, I don't ice skate. So I went to a flea market, and then I met Belinda and all of them over there. And uh, uh, Riker was there. And there was a young woman about the age of 17 that had kind of uh, joined their little two-person clique there, and they were all three ice skating and having fun. When we got in the truck later, and we were getting ready to take Riker home, uh, Sister Maya had made a comment. She said, that girl, just there wasn't there was just something not right there. And Riker's like, yeah. When she asked and said she needed nicotine, he said, and Maya said too, yeah, that's what it was. It, it just wasn't right. And I'm like, they understand that, mm -hmm. don't they? We've been teaching them right. Because they understand that it's not right for a 17-year-old girl, right, to want something like that. They understand that it probably isn't best for your body to have that in there. But yeah. this 17-year-old girl was saying that. And Maya and Riker were like, no, that's just something about her, right? And it's it's good, church, come on now. It's good that our kids are recognizing good people to be around and those that we really just need to pray for. <laughs> I'm not saying that we sh shouldn't be around them. Don't get me wrong, amen. They were very, very nice to this young girl, and so was Sister Alvy, and I think she even bought her something to eat. But the fact of the matter is, is that you'll never win a soul by telling our kids abstain from being around x y and z type of people amen as hard as it is to say that amen and we want to protect sister ashley we want to protect our kids i know i know amen but the fact of the matter is is that if at home we are teaching them the righteousness of christ that's going to carry over into their behavior away from us amen. i wish somebody say amen amen, amen. amen. Anybody got a comment on that? You know, when you're in the world, you want to see that hole mm. inside of you because you're wanting something. We all, I feel like we're designed to want something, to desire something. And the only yeah. thing that we can feel that with is God's spirit. Mm -hmm. But young people and uh, even older people who are out in sin, they don't realize what that is. Yeah. So they fill it with everything else. That young lady, you know, she probably don't have somebody to teach her. Amen. Like we have be able to teach these young people nowadays, Carissa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a friend of mine, and he went to jail later on, but when he was around my grandmother, he always said, I wish I had somebody to love me like she did. Yeah. That was strict. That was willing to tell me, you know, I need to be home at a certain time. You know, it, and we got to learn to have, be able to show that same kind of love mm -hmm. to other people. He recognized there was something different in our lives that he didn't have and he desired it. You know, Brother Tony, what I'm finding more of is that if I <clears throat> exclude myself, and don't love people. Yeah. Here's what we do: when when we when we refuse to uh, love these kids and these with problems and issues, and we don't we don't want to be associated, we don't want to be seen with or around these people. Um, we we find ourselves not praying for them. Mm -hmm. Now, if we love them enough, we'll pray for them, mm -hmm. And we'll be around them enough for, that we'll start to see that prayer turning into fruition. Something is coming of it, right? It's when we isolate ourselves, and that's what a lot of churches preach, and I'm particularly talking about UPC churches, because they isolate themselves, right? And so they're not giving away the love, and when the world sees them in, uh, 
what Sister Chris is wearing today. No, I'm just kidding. But when the world sees them in that, that dress code, they can't relate to that. I don't know. Maybe I'm way off. Not, not only that, but they, they condemn. They condemn. That's a very good word. They do not in, in, uh, uh, try to entice people to come to church. Amen. They don't enti try to entice anyone into wanting mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. My my daughter uh, yeah. raised apostolic. They uh, had went to Duluth, Minnesota, her and her husband. They wanted to find a good apostolic church, and they seen some people dress uh, uh, according to the manner, you know, and went over there and started talking to them, and they said, you wouldn't be comfortable in our church because you don't dress right. Oh, my. That's terrible. But we're apostolic. You, so what? You're not holy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to our standard. My daughter had worn long hair that went down to her ankles for many years, and she started suffering neck problems. We took her to a doctor, and he said she's got to cut her hair. It's pulling on her neck. It's causing, uh, she already has some, uh, I can't remember what, a ruptured disc or something like that in her neck. And he said that she has to keep her hair short. Mm -hmm. And so she had her hair short in Duluth, Minnesota. Oh, no, that you can't come to our church. Well, what about people that can't grow hair? I literally knew uh, Sister Patty, Sister uh, Cardwell, if you remember her. She she had such thin hair that it would just break off. And yet she was a giant of a prophetess. And um, I'm like, that poor woman wouldn't be asked to come into some churches because she couldn't grow her hair. It would just break apart. Genetically, according to scientists and doctors, certain women... And, uh, can, and men can't grow their hair beyond a certain length. Yeah. Now, Sister Bain, being part Native American, and my daughter, uh, they didn't have no hindrances. They could grow hair to drag it on the floor behind their back. You know? Brother Bain's kinked, in case you can't yeah. tell. <laughs> and, and I used to could grow hair. <laughs> Just gotta get the right fertilizer. So, what is it that Christ is wanting the church to be like? What does he expect us to be like? We're supposed to hunger and thirst after his righteousness. What, what is that? Well, turn with me to the book of Luke this morning. And I want to turn uh, to the, the book of Luke 17. And when you got it, just shout amen. Okay, nobody's got it. Luke 17. And jump down to verse number 12. We'll start there. And as he entered into a certain village, so that's Luke 17 and 12. As he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men. That were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show thyself. So remember, these were lepers. Go show thyself yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw uh, that he had been healed, that he was healed, he turned back, and with a loud voice, he glorified God. And he fell down. This is what God wants us to do. You notice that God didn't expect them to do the right thing. But what he wants us to do is to seek hunger, thirst, more of his righteousness. Yeah. So this guy fell down on his face and his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered saying, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? So God didn't expect them to turn around and to praise him, to seek more of him, right? To give him glory for what he is doing and what he did. But one did it. And here's what the Lord told him. He said, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Yeah. We see that God rewards those that diligently seek him. That are hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They'll be fulfilled. They will be filled. Everyone wants something from the Lord, but very few want to be seeking the righteousness of who God is. We want the blessing of God or to be happy. <clears throat> Amen. And in this case, the guys wanted healed, right? <clears throat> but we do not want to give God the praise and seek him for who he is. <clears throat> we want what we can get from God. Yet we want more of what God can do when we do not thank him for what he's already done. Yeah. 
He's given us an example, Sister Wanda, to live by. He has given more righteousness to us if we just hunger and thirst, we find it. Seeking God for who He is is different than seeking Him for what He can do or just what you want or what you think you need. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, we've got to hurry, but Genesis chapter 3 tells us what happened that ended that relationship with God, that personal brother Aaron, one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. We know in, uh, in for fact that the Lord desires a, a close relationship with his people. But in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees. This tells us, Sister Ashley, that at one time, God walked with man. Yeah. That was the kind of relationship we can judge by the book of Genesis that God wanted to have with his people. Yeah. Yeah. But we ruined it. Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. The stubbornness, the pride, disobedience, the disloyalty, call it what you want. We separate ourselves from that tight relationship with God. That's right. Don't we? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. Man realizes his fallen state. Yes. That's why God said to seek more, hunger, thirst after righteousness. To try to bridge that gap. To try to build that bridge. To have a better relationship with God. But it's that thing. That righteousness of God. To be more like God. That we push away to fulfill the desires of the flesh. The Lord God called unto Abraham and said, Where art thou? Verse 11 of Genesis 3 says, And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me. Amen. Now we pass the buck, don't we? She gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the woman, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every great beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Bruise thy head, and bruise thy heel speaks of the cross. Mm -hmm. Upon unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So at the fall of man, there were consequences to that. Amen. Amen. Sister Martha, even in the third book of Genesis, we see there were consequences yeah. to a relationship not one-on-one -on -one and tight with God. And the same thing didn't go away, but it exists today. When we don't have and seek that uh, a hunger and thirst for righteousness of God, we are separating ourselves further and further from it worries me when people miss service after service after service after service. Because it's easier to miss the next time. Yeah. Yeah. And the more that you miss church, the further away from God. Well, I don't need church to, uh, to be close to God. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. You're 100% wrong. You need church. Yeah. Yeah. You need church. Yeah. Amen. It's easier to miss the next time, isn't it? Yeah. It worries me when people miss. Right. Forsake not the right. assembly of yourselves together as much as you see the hour approach. Right. And even more so as you see that day approaching, right? right? And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the day of thy life. Thorns and also the thistle shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art also shalt 
uh, unto dust shall you return. Because of sin, there is a large gap between what God wants for us and what we want for ourselves. Amen. I don't put any um, uh, short, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but I, I, I believe in education. I do. I believe there's absolutely nothing wrong with having every degree as long as it doesn't come between you and God, right? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with education. But when we, when we learn so much of the world, right, and when we become what we think we know it all and that we are smarter than the average person or we know more than God, that's dangerous ground. Amen. Amen. Yes, it yeah. is. It's dangerous ground. Yeah. If we thirst and hunger for righteousness, we are trying to bridge that gap. We're trying to build that bridge back to God that says, I want to be more like you. And in closing this morning, Hosea 4 and 10. I want to read this last scripture. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. We will seek everything else to make ourselves happy. But we'll never be filled because we stop seeking for the Lord. Yeah. Because we don't seek for him. When we leave the Lord out of our lives, we are chasing sin. People are like, well, I don't have to go to church, and I don't, I don't have to know the Lord. Then, honey, you're on your way to hell. No, I'm not. I've heard this argument. People will say, I don't have to go to church to go to heaven. But everybody that does go to church is not always going to heaven. I understand that. I understand that. There are what you call hypocrites. But we are striving to enter in. I want to be thirsty. I want to be hungry more for the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. I know it wasn't a shouting message today. It was a lesson on truth. Amen. But my heart is, is worried this morning for those that are staying out of church so long. Mm -hmm. It really is. Sister Wong. Amen. We're in the last hour, brother. Yes, we are. The book of Isaiah says they will call evil good and good evil. Can I add a scripture? Absolutely. Matthew 7 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Because all those that seek find. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Brady. That's it. That's it. How long is that? It's for everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. So if we ask, we seek, we call after him, and we knock on the door, it's going to be open to us. As he told one group in the Revelations, I've set you before you an open door, and you have a little power, and no man can shut it. I was reading <clears throat> this week a little bit on the uh, the gentleman that in the Bible that goes to his friend's house and he knocks at midnight asking, said, somebody's come to my house. I don't have anything to give them, right? And um, I need some bread to give these, these, these people. And the guy's like, listen, it's midnight. I'm laying down. My kids are asleep, right? The Bible says because of his importunity, because of that, that knocking, the friend will get up. But this author looked at that a little bit different. He knew that he could go to that man's house, and regardless of what time it was, he was going to wind up opening the door. Yeah. That's the way Christ is. No matter what time it is, or what the need is, how little, how big, God is always there, yeah. isn't he? Sister Martha, it doesn't matter if it is our back hurting, if it's our head, if it's cancer. God can answer every need. Yeah. He can heal every disease. Yeah. He's that capable. If we pray, don't pray with the expectation that I'm going to have to wind up praying again tomorrow. We should pray and say, I know God's got this. Not that you shouldn't continue to pray. I'm not preaching that or advocating for that. But what I'm saying is that when you pray today, you need to believe that today God can solve that situation. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, thank you that we seek hunger and thirst more for your righteousness. Because, God, if we do seek after you, we shall be filled. 
We can have those things that our spirit desires to have. And this morning, Lord, I pray for the children that are here that are, Lord, they are so tossed about in this world. And God, they're making decisions at this young age that are, are critical to the rest of their life. I pray this morning, God, that they will hear something in Sunday school or in the song service or that they will see the adults living a life that they want to be like and strive to be like. I pray this morning, God, that you will help us as adults in this class, Lord, to, to hunger and thirst more after your righteousness, setting aside and pushing back our own selfish desires and the things that the flesh wants and bring our flesh under subjection to you and hunger and thirst more for your righteousness. I pray this morning for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Forgive us, God. Because sometimes these things are what drives us. But Lord, I pray this morning, help us to turn from the wicked way to seek more after you. This morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, is there anybody this morning that you need prayer? Amen. I feel like in this church that we all fight, every one of us fights something. If it's depression, if it's some sort of addiction, if it's a, uh, it's the devil is just always trying to throw something up to you. Yes. I feel that. And most of us in this room and those that aren't even here today, you know the importance of of being in the house of God. So let's pray for those this morning that are not here. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are homesick, Lord, that are genuinely sick. God, I pray for healing for them. But God, those that are drifting away, those that are allowing things to come between you and them, whatever, Lord, it may be, I bind those spirits because that's what they are. And God, we rebuke them back to hell. And Lord, to be out of our life, that the guardian angels around about us, Lord, would help us and minister to us. And Lord, that the anointing of God would speak to the heart this morning. Remind us of the importance that it, that it is to put our relationship with you ahead of everything else. To seek, to hunger and thirst after your righteousness. Because Lord, we'll be filled. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Sister Christy, would you come to the piano this morning and get a song? I know we've already prayed for Sister Martha, but there may be somebody else that needs prayer this morning. I'm excited about uh, hearing Elijah's minister tonight speak to us. Amen. And I want us to encourage our young people, encourage our young adults. God, he's just 21, but... I want us to encourage them, Brother Noel, because if we don't encourage them here, they're going to get encouragement somewhere. Amen. And these teenagers and these kids uh, uh, are going to, some of the kids, not the little littles, but the other kind of kids, uh, K up, amen, kindergarten up, are going to start being in the church on Sunday night so they can observe and they can, they can learn to worship and praise. But if you and I, as the adults aren't teaching them, we aren't, we aren't giving our worship unto God in front of them. How else are they going to learn how important that church is and how important it is to be in the house of God? Because the world is just desiring to tell them how important it is to be accepted by others. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So let's pray for them today. Amen. Sister Christy, as she gets a song, if you need prayer, please come this morning. Touch Jesus
a yard sale Saturday, Friday and Saturday in my house. Amen. And uh, if you have stuff you want to bring, you can bring it to church tonight or you can bring it over to the house this week. Amen. We'll have tables set up. They're already getting set up. Amen. And don't forget that. Amen. It's going to be a good time. We always have a good yard sale. Amen. And so, huh? All right, you heard that. You bringing it over to the house this week? Yeah. Okay, all right. If not, I can come get it. I may have to go. Another elderly lady that don't live around here, she's got a bunch of stuff I guess I'm supposed to go pick up. So, amen. So uh, if you have things that you can't get in your car, amen. We got trucks. We can pick it up. Amen. Amen. Get it. Jesus was a